Good morning, everyone. We heard rumors that you all had fun last night, so we appreciate you being here at 8.50. Um, my name is Michelle Evans, and I'm the Global Lead of Retail and Digital Consumer Insights at the research firm uh, Euromonitor International. And I'm here uh, joined with uh, part of the Brain Trust at Sam's Club, uh, Sabrina and Jordan. And let's take a second and let you introduce yourselves. Yep. Hi, everybody. I'm Sabrina Callahan, and I lead digital member engagement and experience for Sam's Club which essentially means we own the entire traffic strategy to drive traffic to our platforms, and then the engagement strategy to ultimately push them down the funnel to purchase. And my name is Jordan Eddy. I look after our digital merchandising and operations team. And our responsibility at Sam's Club is to support our merchants with their curation efforts, to launch items with incredible content, uh, to ensure that our members can buy things the way they want to. So we have multiple channels for members to shop through and we're accountable to that piece. And we're the business owners for discoverability. So think search and taxonomy, browse, things of that nature. So thank you for having us this morning. Great. Well, in the title, we say, we see it on the, the slide here, charting a path to sustainable growth by being member obsessed. Let's t unpack how you, uh, how you are becoming member obsessed um, and specifically when it comes to e-commerce, how you drive convenience. Um, I think, Sabrina, you're gonna kick us off here? Yep, absolutely. Um, so we are member obsessed, we're a membership model. So we have to get members in, they have to pay to shop with us, and ultimately we're then obsessed with them for that whole year so that at the end of the year, when they have the decision to renew, they choose yes. So it's really important for us to leverage all of the member feedback along the year whenever they have an experience with us, whether it's in the app, whether um, it's shopping one of our channels, we take it very seriously and we continue to improve. Jordan's gonna talk about some of the specific e-commerce channels and how we're focusing there, but I'll give you an example of one that we recently did. Um, if you have ever shopped in a Sam's Club and or have the Sam's Club app, will you raise your hand? Okay. Hey, that's quite a few. It's a good action item, though, for yes. the day. You know, you can just <laughs> pull that phone out, download it real quick. Oh, nice. Good plug. Um, so if you do shop with Sam's Club and use the app, you may have heard of something called scan -and go And what scan -and go is, is you can go in there, you can use uh, your app to scan the barcodes, and then check out in the app and skip the checkout lines. Our members had given us feedback that the lines were too long, they were getting frustrated, it was taking too long to get through, so we developed scan go Our members love it. We boast like over a 90 NPS for it, which is fantastic. However, when we talk member obsessed, we are continuing to look at the feedback. And some of the feedback that we heard, and those of you who are, are familiar with it might say the same thing, it's great that we can skip the checkout line, but then kind of defeats the purpose if we then have to sit in the exit line to get out of the club. So challenge accepted. Um, what the team has done is developed friction, uh, frictionless exit technology. So it's first of its kind uh, application of artificial intelligence and computer vision technology to scan the baskets and let you use scan and go and then ultimately skip and leave the club. And we've piloted across 10 clubs, and we're just looking at the member feedback. Is it working? Is it convenient? And did it solve that member uh, pain point for you? Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect example of member obsession for Sam's. So in theory, it's just speeding up that speeding process. Speeding up. It's all about the convenience. Yep. Yeah, when I think about member obsession, the first word that comes to mind for Sam's Club is convenience. And delivering on convenience is our differentiator in the channel and in retail, frankly. When I started at the club, that was around six years ago, <clears throat> we had just launched um, free shipping for Plus for our Plus members. So it was kind of our first big push into implementing convenience at scale. And then a couple years later, um, the world shut down, as I'm sure you all remember uh, very well. And we rallied as an organization to launch curbside uh, pickup through all of our locations, so all of our buildings across the nation, to allow our members to shop in ways that were more convenient for them, that were reliable, that were safe in a time that was really uncertain. And as time went on, we moved on with the same day, next day delivery from Club Two in those same nodes, further kind of exemplifying what convenience looks like in the channel. And we continue to lean into that, punctuated, yes, by things like scan and go advancements and computer vision, but it's really at the heart of what we do, the thread that, that connects it all is that member obsession and kind of leaning into convenience to drive growth. 
Great. Now, Jordan, you're leading digital merchandising, okay. and let's unpack for a second how it is that you're helping members, you know, uh, find those items that they love. Yeah, so I mentioned that uh, digital merchandising and operations has responsibility for things like content, for search, for discovery, uh, for making sure members can buy things the way they want. I'll give you a two-part answer. One, big believer in retail operations, excellence, discipline, just doing what we say we're going to do at a very high level. And I think you earn the right to do innovative things by being great at the fundamentals. So that's inclusive of all those things I just talked about. And I'd urge everybody to think through the dimensions of their own work that kind of push you in that direction. But the second part of the answer is leaning into innovation. So one thing I'll, I'll speak to is uh, we recently announced a partnership with an organization called Echo. And Echo develops interactive, immersive video content that we will use on our PDPs. And we've done several of these. We're very encouraged by the results to add to cart, to conversion rate. But this allows us to tell item stories at a deeper level in a space uh, that members really want to see it through, through the app, through e-commerce. So it's partnerships like that mixed with executing retail at a high level that allows us to bring our items to life digitally. Uh, certainly, Sam's Club is a different kind of retailer from the standpoint that you are you know, a, a membership group. And it does allow you to have, you know, you know to know everything that a, a shopper might buy. Yeah. Um, you know, not all retailers obviously have that advantage, but we know more are moving into loyalty programs to try to, to, try to replicate that. Um, Sabrina, tell us about how you take that data, how you try to make it actionable, um, you know, in, in making day-to-day -day decisions. Yeah, you're right. We have a lot of data about our members. Mm -hmm. So every time they make a purchase, it's tied back to membership ID. So we can see how often they're coming in, what platforms they're using, meaning are they coming in the club to shop, are they shopping on desktop, on mobile web, in app, when they're coming in, what types of things are they putting in their cart, and what's their frequency, and where do we have opportunities to drive things like category penetration or more trips. Um, so we're thinking through how we leverage that data to make it more convenient, again, leaning in on the convenience differentiator. Mm -hmm. And so an example is on our homepage, if you pull up the app, you'll see things like frequently ordered items or inspired by your recent reviews, or we have like a run of site banner at the top that we can target based on the member when they're coming in. So we think about that, the, the homepage is the front door of our digital club, right? So we have to think about how we leverage that space really intentionally to talk to those members and push them through the purchase funnel. Mm -hmm. So using data, not to put necessarily you know, blockers in front of them of things we need them to do, but more so how to make it more convenient so that mm -hmm. they have a good experience and they want to keep coming mm -hmm. back. One of the, the trends that has impacted retail over the last 10 plus years now is this advent of mobile. And the US was certainly a little bit slower to move to mobile than some countries like China. Um, but you know, in our data at Euromonitor, we do see that of all e-commerce purchases, you know, mobile is the top device now. Um, Sabrina, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, in terms of that data you're, you're discussing or that you just elaborated on, um, what it is that you're seeing, you know, how consumers use that mobile device, how is that impacting their, their shopping experience? Yeah, I was actually just thinking about a presentation we did last week, and it was saying that over $700 billion is expected in 2025 for retailers through mobile purchases which to me is just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, Sam's is experiencing the same thing. So again, we can see where they're shopping, um, what platforms they prefer to use, and we have seen significant growth both in app and on mobile web. There's still a role for desktop. We know what types of members are using desktop, right? They're research heavy, might be more business oriented. But when we think about the role of mobile, we continue to think about how do we drive that behavior and give them more reasons to come in. And in fact, if you break out the total traffic, 50% of that is coming through our app. So we've got the loyalty. I think where we have the biggest opportunity and how we think about it, partnering with merchandising and marketing is, if you think how they're using the app, a lot of them are using it when they're using Scanago in the club meaning they're in club shopping, but how do we get them to shop when they're not in the club to create that relationship in their pocket? And that's what we're continually obsessing about is how do we give them more reasons to come back 
more often mm -hmm. and try things like shipping, like ship to home, curbside, same day delivery versus just having the app, having it downloaded on their phone, but only using it when they're in the club mm -hmm. is a massive opportunity for us. But you still see from a, from a I guess, an e-commerce, the purchase perspective that it's is dominated by mobile in terms of what they buy outside the store. Absolutely. They are using yep, it. Yep. Okay. They're still shopping on mobile heavily. And I think the big thing becomes if they're only coming every three or four weeks, how do mm -hmm. we introduce a new trigger mm -hmm. and drive some frequency so we can add more value to their membership? So Jordan, let's flip to you. How do you see this impacting your merchandising strategy? Yeah, I'm gonna give you all a really practical response and it's more focused on behaviors than it is probably on the strategy piece mm -hmm. of it. Um, I assume a lot of people in here use a laptop or a desktop when they're doing their work at the office. And when you think about what Sabrina just said, most engagement that's happening with your customers and members, whether you're serving clients or you're serving actual customers in a retail store, are happening on a phone or happening on a mobile device, yet we spend a lot of time looking at our experiences in laptops and desktops and things of that nature. A behavioral shift, when you think about e-commerce as a total company fight, that we observed at least, was a couple of years ago like, why are we doing that? Like, pick up your phone, let's act as a customer, let's act as a member and try to experience this the way they do. It is amazing by making that complete behavioral shift, what you unlock operationally, what you can understand better about your members and their experience and how to make improvements. So I know it sounds really like, duh, kind of, but doing it with discipline um, made a huge difference for us. Yeah. Jordan, a quick follow up. <clears throat> you know, we see consumers today, they want what they want when they want it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and your challenge as a retailer is to serve that up. Um, when you think about the merchandising strategy, how do you ensure that you have the right items in stock that when it comes to that web experience that you're serving up the right item to them? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so our merchandising organization has the privilege of curating and designing an excellent assortment. It's not a good, better, best strategy. It's really just the best strategy. And for us, best means excellence and quality, it means a disruptive value, it means delightful experiences with every item we choose to carry. And those principles persist, whether you're shopping in clubs, whether you're shopping online, whether that engagement's through curbside or through same day, next day delivery or mm -hmm. ship to home, the strategy is really the same and it's that we're focused centrally on just curating and designing a great assortment. Um, but we complement that with other inputs. So you think about members giving feedback through NPS surveys or through ratings and reviews or deep diving into um, information within search and seeing what folks are looking for. We can use all these data points to kind of enrich the merchandising mm -hmm. decisions and make sure that they have insights to make better decisions around assortment. But ultimately, the strategy itself fundamentally is, is actually the same. And I think that demonstrates the power, th for us at least, of what Omnichannel can really be at the club. Excellent. Sabrina, I'm going to ask you a, a, a question. Um, for those that don't know, your background before Sam's Club, you were actually in the travel sector and mm -hmm. in hotels. Yep. And I'd be curious, are there lessons that you've taken from that experience that you think applies well um, you know, into your job today? Oh my goodness, curveball question. I know. <laughs> um, you know what's interesting, so I don't know if any of you have ever been in hospitality and then over to retail, but they are very night and day. So I got whiplash coming from hospitality into retail. Um, there's like move, 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 fast, fast, fast. Um, I think though the one thing was pretty constant between the two is the member and customer obsession. Mm -hmm. And so what I was able to do is leverage what I had learned within hospitality, because that's all you're there for, right? Mm -hmm. Is to provide a fantastic experience. And I think with retail, you sometimes get in this rigmarole of P&L and get the plan. But with Sam's Club, what I've seen is taking that step back and saying, yes, we need to achieve plan, but we need to do it by keeping the member front and center of every mm -hmm. decision that we're making. Because if we don't, it's just a short-term gain versus a long-term growth. Yeah. And so it's been really cool to see the consistencies between the two. Yeah, that's a good insight because probably of any sector, travel, hotel, they were the first member obsessed, right? Yeah. Um, so we have a couple minutes left and I want to I want to give you each a moment to share, you know, for our audience here, they may have just be starting out the show today. Um, what's one piece of insight you hope that they would, they would take away from our discussion? Uh, Jordan, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I think the common thread again across all of this is just 
focusing on your members, focusing on your customers, focusing on all those you serve, whatever that industry is that you're in, creating avenues to take that feedback in, pursue it in earnest, and make sure you fully understand how that can drive meaningful outcomes to the business. So just, it goes back to that member obsession, but it doesn't have to be just retailer to customer, retailer to member. It's really any constituents that you serve across all the dimensions of the businesses that you run. I second that. <laughs> I would also say, I think with the member obsession, you also need a really strong team that's willing to challenge status quo. I think with companies that have been around for a while, if members aren't complaining, it's fine. But the reality is, could it be better? Let's push and use all of the innovation that you can to test and learn and fail quickly mm -hmm. and let your members tell you whether it's working. So we have a leadership meeting every Monday morning where we are looking at the member data and then we are all in a room challenging each other to say how could it be better. And I think if you have the right people that are pushing and not afraid to say, hey, I think this could be better mm -hmm. and challenge each other, then I think one can't happen without the other, so. That's great. Well, thank you, Sabrina uh, Jordan, for your time today and your insights. It's been a great conversation. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank, thank you. you all.